the time I blindly crossed the ocean with a narcissist, got left alone in London, and then had the ultimate revenge, let's get into it. I had been seeing this man for about nine months, and he was super avoidant. I mean, I knew that. If you look back at my earlier videos, I talk and vent all about how avoidant he was. But what I didn't realize was he was actually a narcissist, and that he was playing me the entire time and cheating on me with other women at the least, let's put it that way. He was traveling for business and was traveling to London for a week long expo and invited me to go along. And I just happened to have come into some money. And so I was able to pay for my own airfare and fly business class. I was able to upgrade my ticket while he was back in coach. Well, as we were boarding the plane to head to said destination, I saw my seat in the front because you know when you get on the plane, um, all of the business first and then business class seats are in order and then the coach is in the very back. Well, I see mine right there and it looks dialed. Like, you know how some international flights, the business class is nicer than the others? Well, this one was just to the nines, wonderful business class. Like I sat down, my seat reclined. <laughs> I had, I was given a glass of champagne when I sat down. There was like a little pouch that was given to me with like an eye cover and, you know, lotion and shampoo. And it was just super uber nice. And then I went back to him, to his seat to kind of like survey what his long 12 hour flight was gonna look like. And it was as coach as coach can be. Um, however, it turns out that there was some way he was able to finagle the seat next to him to be empty. And so me being in my pleaser, let me do the most for you mentality, which ashamedly, you're going to see this pattern throughout this story. I was a complete pick me girl and I put up with poor behavior and I tried to be the cool girl. And so I decided, hey, why don't you take my seat in business class and I'll go ahead and take the seat back here and coach because I know I can lay down and he had longer legs than me. So I was like, you know, I can fold my legs up and kind of sleep in the fetal position, whereas you need to like sprawl out a little bit. So why don't we just trade? But before I had made that offer, as I was sitting in the business class seat and we were trying to get situated before the flight leaves, he was in the back trying to finagle the seat next to him and coach. And during that time, as I'm sitting there, a really hot Englishman gets on, sits right next to me in business class. And it turns out he grew up in Italy, he's Italian, and has been living in the UK his whole life. I could have sat next to that man in bougie bougie business class meeting a hot single man who clearly wanted to talk to me and was like not like understated about it like it was obvious that he was into me but no i gave that seat to my boyfriend and i sat in business i sat in coach like listen there's going to be a lot of times in this story where you are just like girl girl i do not have respect for you and i will totally take that i deserve it so we go on this 12 hour flight we don't sit together, but I slept most of the time. He's sitting in my business class, drinking my champagne, using my lotion, using my eye mask. Listen, you're going to see this pattern with him as well. He is a man that likes the finer things, especially if it's on his woman's dime. So we land in the UK and what happened was he would go to this like expo thing all day and I would just go on the, on the tube and like go to museums. I went to Victoria and Albert. I went and did high tea. I would sit at the bar at um, like restaurants that I had seen that I had to go to. I shopped all day. The first thing I did when I got there was buy myself a long black beautiful pea coat and a really nice handbag. Like I really treated myself on this trip and I have to say I made the best use of the time when he wasn't with me and honestly looking back now I'm realizing that this was honestly the best part of the whole trip was me being able to like just do my own thing and just vibe with myself. But I hadn't quite figured that out yet that like actually that's the magic of traveling alone is like you get to do whatever you want and just vibe with yourself. And I was still trying to make it work with my boyfriend. I also didn't realize that he was a narcissist, but I digress. So at night after his expos, his day long showings for his work, we would go to restaurants and mind you again, I was doing everything. So I had made all of these reservations at nice restaurants way ahead of us going because I wanted to go to nice restaurants while we were there. And he was like, well, I'm just going to be too busy working. So babe, why don't you make all the arrangements? 
which now I know that's a no-no. Let the man do it all. Let the man make all the reservations. Let him make, do all the work. That's how he garners fast suppression and falls in love with you. It is not the way other way around. It's not you doing all the things for him. That actually makes him fall out of love with you and act shady and cheat on you, which I will get into later in the story. So I had made reservations at all these amazing places and I had the money to spend to go out to eat. Halfway through the trip, he ran out of money and I ended up treating him to dinner many times. So anyway, we head to the restaurant and we're getting ready to go out. I haven't seen this man all day. He's been working. I'm really excited to spend time with my boyfriend and I get really ready. I mean, I had planned every outfit down to the nines. I ordered all of my outfits on Cider, which if you have not been on Cider, this is not a sponsored post, but I love Cider so much. C-I-D-E-R. I'll tag it right here. Um, I had picked out this whole scheme. It was winter time, so I had my black Chelsea boots. I had double layered tights that were nude. Um, I also had a black pair, but like they keep you warm so I could wear short skirts and dresses and things like that and still go out and um, be in like, you know, the London, <clears throat> the London winter air, fall air. But um, I looked so cute on his arm. Like he should have been so delighted that I was his date for the week. And we were headed on the tube into the city for our dinner reservation and as we're walking I'm like just keeping up I'm walking to our destination I'm not even having him like figure out how we get there like I know how to navigate myself in the city I've been doing it all day while he's been at work and so we're walking towards our train and he says to me can you walk a little bit faster please like in this really irritated like <laughs> queen energy which he had almost the entirety of our relationship but I, can you please walk a little bit faster and I'm like why I'm just here walking and he's like because everyone's in a hurry and you're you're like holding up the move the like the move of pedestrian traffic and I'm like no I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rush because people are rushing home from work because our reservation was, you know, at seven. So it was around rush hour when people are like trying to get home from work. I'm not going to rush because I'm not in a hurry. I am merely going to dinner with my boyfriend. I'm not going to rush just because other people are rushing. They can go around me. And he's like so annoyed. He's just like, ugh, ugh. like, and I, of course I clapped back at him. So he quieted down, but not without all of the eye rolls and the like, gasping that he was doing the entire walk to our train and I'm just ignoring him because a I have to pee and b like shut up like we're going to a restaurant where I made the reservations I look snatched on your arm like shut the fuck up and realize who you have standing next to you and what a privilege that is and stop being such a little bitch so he's gasping he's rolling his eyes and we get on the train and I'm like, look, I just want to have a good time. Like, I don't want to fight with him, even though the fight was about him having a problem that I wasn't walking fast enough. But anyway, um, so we're on the train and I'm listening to my AirPods. I'm listening to music and I give him one of my AirPods and I'm like, hey, do you want to listen to like the song I'm listening to? Because it's like boring on the tube, right? And he like puts it up to his ear and then he's like, Ugh. And like gives it back to me because apparently he didn't like the song that I had chosen. So I was like, okay, he's just going to be a dick. Like, it's just whatever. So we get off the tube and we're walking to the restaurant and he's like not walking on the outside of the street. Like he's not trying to shield me from like all of the double decker buses flying by us and rush hour cars, like careening through the, you know, narrow streets of London. He doesn't really care. Um, except for this one moment, like this truck comes careening towards me and he like kind of pushes me and he's like, get out of the way. Like this truck's going to hit you. And he's like, so mad at me. And I'm like, wow, he's just like in such a little bitchy mood. And now looking back, I'm realizing it's because he didn't want to be with me that night. Who knows why he might have been talking to somebody else, wanting to have a conversation with somebody else back in the States and needed an hour away from me so he can make that phone call or he wanted to go somewhere else and meet other types of people besides me looking back now like it was so obvious he was trying to cause fights but um, at the time I just didn't understand what was happening because this is like not the behavior of somebody that is taking his girl out on their like second or third night in a foreign country on a dream vacation follow along for part two